Welcome to Kellis Coder and today we will continue with our exploration of ARM Assembler. So we first will be writing the Hello World example and then we will be extending it with the two upper. Now there are some fundamental changes for ARM64 over ARM32. And that is first and foremost is 64 bits. So we will be using the X registers. X register is 64 bits long. And if you see me using a W, that is the lower 32 bits of the X register. Just like with Intel, you have the AL, which is the lower part of the AX register. And you have the AH, which is the upper part. On ARM, you don't have an upper part. It's just a W for the lower uh, bits. And also you will notice that the interrupt vectors are different. I will put a link here where you can find the sheet with the newest uh, interrupt vectors. And if you want to use 64 bits, you need to install Buster. I already have it installed, let's dive in. First creating the hello world. So let's first make a text segment and a data segment. We will make a string that says, uh, that is an ASCII string, just like we did last week. Hello world, ARM64 rules. And we need the LAN, the LAN is the current address where the LAN label is minus the string, just like we did last time. And then we need to align it to 64 bits, so eight bytes. And we have a global start, so we do the start colon. We will create the functions right away. That is one of the things that you will see is different. Print, and we will have a red instead of a pop PC. And we don't need to push the uh, link register, the LR anymore. So that is a whole lot cleaner than in ARM32. Uh, let's in X0, capitals are on, we will have still the one that is the file descriptor. File descriptor one is the standard out. So where ARM32 had R0 to R4 as arguments, ARM64 Linux has X0 to X4 as arguments. And after that, it goes on the stack. Um, and then we need to set, this is something different. On ARM32, you set it in R7. Here you set the interrupt vector in X8. For some reason, they changed that. And the interrupt vector is 64 for the right system. Cool. And you still call the surface with SVC zero. Let's do the exit function. Exit, we will do a return. Uh, move x8 with, I believe it was a 94. No, or 93. 93. And we call it. So x0 is string pointer. x is string len uh, x1 sorry x1 string pointer and here x0 contains exit code whenever I write contain I write it wrong okay now let's see if this works LDR x1 equals string LDR x2 will become len and then we jump to the print and move x0 with literal value 0 I believe I missed that on the ARM32 uh, video so God knows what the exit code was it could be very random Let's see, is this correct? Uh, 
print x1, x8. Uh, it should compile. Let's see. It does. And does it work? And it works. So that is your hello world. Now let's copy this and let's do the to upper. To upper directory. So the source code is already in the description. And on GitHub, every line has a good remark. I put it in there. I don't do that on these videos, it takes too long. Okay, let's create an upper function. X1 contains x0 contains source string pointer x1 contains uh, uppercase pointer x2 contains length let's call this to upper like we did last time and let's return and we need to create a string for the uppercase uppercase and that is a dot fill and it is len positions long a position is one byte and we zero that out just like we did in the last one no changes uh, let me think we need to read a byte and here it gets a bit tricky you would assume to put in an x3 that doesn't work because you're only reading a byte arm assembler wants a w re a register a 32 bit and the w3 is only the lowest bit 32 bits of the x3 register so it's not really that big of a deal and what do we say x0 contains the source after we read the byte we will increment the x0 pointer by one, so it points to the next character, like we did in the other video. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Now I need to check whether it's whether w3. I want lowercase comp. The w3 literal value is a branch greater or equal. Then we go to do the upper. Else we branch to storing so here we have the two upper and then the two uh, then the store store byte just like we did on arm 32 from w3 into x1 and then increment the x1 pointer by one so that also points to the next character and we need to subtract one from the length. The length is in x2. So from x2 we subtract one. And we use the subs like I instructed in the arm32. S works on the status register. Since we want to compare whether it's zero, we need the subs and not a sub. Branch not equal to upper. Because then we're not at the end of the string yet. And that should work, yes. Uh, here we need to compare W3 with uh, the literal value Z. Branch if greater, because we do want to change Z to uppercase. Then we jump to store, and otherwise we actually turn it to uppercase. Let's do the subs, uh, W3, from W3 I take 32 so basically changing the capital uh, changing the lowercase a to a capital a i think this should work did i do something very stupid not yet probably will uh, this will be the uppercase string that we want to print and let's do two lines yank put uh, this is the uppercase too yeah that's correct and uh, we need a lowercase string or a string that we want to change to upper uh, string branch long so we're a uh, branch with link and we call it to upper so that will change it to uppercase 
I think this should work. And there we go, we have an uppercase string. Now let's do the same thing that we did last time. Let's create a loop. A move. Let's use W3 again. So let's do FFFF. Subs W3, W3, take away one. Branch not equal, not zero to underscore loop. So now we should have 50. 6,000 entries. Yeah, there we go. So it's almost the same as ARM64, except I think it's more legible because we just have the return statement. We don't need to do that convoluted push link register and pop into program counter. So that is a lot cleaner. The only thing that I find weird is that you need a W register for doing a load byte but yeah that's what it is so i hope you like this episode and see you in the next one